Hi, this video is a quick start guide to the Cylonix IntelliGel Shapeshifter module. This is a extremely deep and I think much misunderstood module, which I'm afraid to say is not helped by a manual, which doesn't really do a very good job of explaining how to use it. It explains what it does, but not necessarily how to make it do that using the buttons and dials on the panel. So what I want to do is not so much play with the thing and make sounds, and we'll do that in a different video. I would like to take you through the panel and kind of explain what everything is, where everything is, how to make it do some very basic things so that you understand, oh, hey, it does that. And all oh, right, that's how I make it do that. This video aims to be a kind of bonus to the absolutely freaking excellent Seth Schaefer Shapeshifter series of videos. And if you do own a Shapeshifter, you need to watch all of Seth's videos. He just explains it really well. So watch those videos. So what I'm hearing here is the output of oscillator one. Now, if you want to um, listen to the output of oscillator two, you just tap out two. But Oscillator 2 has a different pitch. There's a coarse pitch here. What that's doing, coarse and fine, are actually controlling the pitch of Oscillator 1. There's a kind of root pitch which Oscillator 1 respects. Like that. So coarse and fine. But this output 2 uses this ratio, and Oscillator 2 is always an offset of Oscillator 1. So we can tune oscillator 2 completely differently, but it's always a base, it's always based on the base frequency of oscillator 1. So 2 always is adjusted by course and this ratio. Uh, and then also we have a quantize button. So we can adjust 2 in quantize steps. To change the actual waveforms themselves, we have to push the wave button up here. This little doodad indicates that you are currently editing oscillator one, one. If you push this, that will change to two. That means you're now editing oscillator two, one. Now oscillator two. And if I turn this with one selected, I can go through these wavetable banks. I like cello. Now, it's a wavetable oscillator, so you can sweep the wavetables. And you do that with the shape control. So that's the end of that one. Back to the start. Cool sound, right? Because you're getting the values in between everything. You don't get steps. Great. And then similarly, we can do output two, just to make this point. And look, that's a completely different set of wavetables, and they're available simultaneously. These shape controls here let you modulate those parameters. So, cool. While I'm here, let me show you this, which is multi. What multi is doing, Multi allows you to chain together, so you're actually hearing cycles. The, imagine that there are a set amount of wavetables here. I'm only hearing one at once, one kind of frame, a window. Multi widens the window, so I can hear more of the available bank at once. So now that's saying for oscillator one, and then two. So... It was just widening the shape control, so that I'm actually just hearing more of the bank at once. The pitch accordingly will drop because you've doubled the frequency of it. You see, so that's only just hearing one little slice, a little narrow band that I'm editing here. And then by doing multis, I'm able to create complex waves got less range to sweep because I'm hearing four waveforms at once. I hope that makes sense. So again, you've got your ways of changing the wavetables and you have to cycle these to flip between the waveforms. 
and we've got multis, which are ways that we can hear more of the wave table bank at once. So another thing that you can do is combine um, the wavetables in different ways. These are the combos. So if I click combo, that indicator says you are changing the combo mode. Now we're ring modding the two. And then there's various mad. Glitch. And back. So combo here is just ways that you can combine oscillator one and two. Simple enough, right? You can FM one oscillator against the other. And if I come back to maybe like basic one, I can do that by just turning this up. That is just an FM control to FM two FMs one. Cool, that, eh? And you can override that here. Quantization becomes nice there. Of course, you can change the shapes while you're FMing. And then you can also change the combos while you're FMing. Pretty nutty. Gribble, gribble, gribble. Like that. So we're back to square one. So you can FM the oscillators quite easily. You can sweep wave shapes quite easily and you can broaden the sweep range. Um, and you can change the wavetables themselves like here. And you can combine them in fruity little ways. Um, so is that starting to make sense? I hope it is. Okay, another cool ass thing that we can do on a shapeshifter is chord mode. So uh, maybe I'll get a brighter sound. You just push this button and that turns on chord mode. What you can't see very easily is that chord here, detune and drive are blue. And that means that when you have activated chord mode, some of these start to do different things. Uh, let me actually get the chord sounding nice. So perhaps I'll choose cello again. Really into the cello. Sounds pretty. Oh yeah. Happy days. Right. So uh, when I was in that chord mode, I can change the chord types. There's lots of preset ones. Ooh, whimsical. And if you push this button again, you get different tuning, just an equal. So oscillator one, only oscillator one, can have different chords. Cool, right? Um, what happens though, but when you have different chords going on, it can drop the volume. And so there's a drive control here that simply drives the output to compensate for the drop. That's all that drive does. It only affects when chord mode is on and it's there to compensate for the according drop and level. That's all. You have to click this drive where it says drive. That's telling you it's adjusting drive and you can increase the drive, right? Simples. The other thing you can do is detune the chord. Sounds nice. Now, here's where we get into the modulation buses. So you have two modulation buses. Modulation bus A this input can take audio rate signals. That's important because um, although this is a digital module, that input A can act very quickly. As in, if you do put audio rate stuff in, it will react um, like you would expect an analog oscillator to react. It's very, very fast. So it's ready to receive fast audio. Um, and mod A is in here. We can choose what mod bus A is affecting by clicking mod A and going through these various choices. Um, I'm not gonna go through what these are. You should refer to the manual. That is a good use of the manual to check what these are. All I would like to point out is one thing which will catch you the hell out, which is shape. Shape has nothing 
to do with the shape controls. What the shape mod is, is actually kind of um, sort of scrambling, it basically readdressing the wavetable so that you're reading the wavetable um, in a different way, uh, <laughs> effectively. Um, the wavetable is read with a saw wave in the inbuilt machine. And if you put an audio rate signal into mod A, and you can change the way that shape um, one or two are read, um, which can just scramble the waveform in crazy ways. Um, it's yet another way that you can push things massively. The other thing is that there is a vocoder built in, uh, which is great. There's other things you can do too, uh, such as, um, well, I'm not going to go into it. There are other things you can do. Um, I just want to keep this relatively simple and just point out the gotcha, shape one and two, mean have nothing to do with this. Um, and that mod A is an audio rate modulation. Now, there is another mod bus. There is mod bus B, and you can modulate um, another set of parameters, mainly this stuff over here, using mod B. This won't take audio rate, but it will happily take kind of LFOs and, and whatnot and good stuff like that. Um, the way that you use this um, might be helpful to point it out. So, um, tilt. There's a kind of a cool parameter, tilt's like a feedback. So, you can apply tilt. But, if I push this button, then, then mod B, that input can now affect tilt. It shows it in this way. What it's showing you is that knob's amount. If I do that, now it's not being, tilt is not being affected by mod B. So I can turn up tilt from zero to a large dial with this. And that's kind of a, a stored base level for tilt. But if I push this, it creates another input. The, and the mod B can now affect it. And I get a, the second knob here. This knob here is an offset. So the result is that plus that, or that minus that. So be aware that when you see it do that, that means that you have now got tilt ready to be modulated via mod B. That's what that means. And this is the offset that's applied. If you stick an LFO into it, hey, let's try it. It should work. There you go, baby. You see? So, once again, if you want to use mod B, you have to double press so that it does that. That means that tilt is now being applied to mod B. You might think that's painfully obvious, but it ain't. So, you now you know. Um, we do have other things, such as this decay knob. What does that do, you might say? Well, the decay knob only does something when you're in percussion mode. And this is a mode where the shapeshifter will only produce, um, what kind of like has its own built-in VCA, basically. Um, if we then put a sound into the sync input, a pluck, or like a, a gate, I should say, I forgot how to speak, like that. This little cheeky gate fires off the shapeshifter. So it sort of saves you um, a VCA and an envelope generator. Pretty sweet, right? Um, and again, that decay, we have a control here. There's no attack control. You can just make it go nice and long or short and plucky. And then once again, if I push that, now the decay is both being affected by the mod B input and this offset here. So. Um, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I put a LFO in as well, it should get slow and fast. Using this as an offset. There you go. And it lets us modulate these things and we can do them multiple things at the same time. So we can adjust both the decay and the drive. You just have to engage these on and off, cycle them on and off so that Mod B is doing what you want it to do. Simple enough. Another thing you can do is you can turn this thing into a super ass complex LFO. Um, and you do that by just turning on LFO. And that just turns on whether 
um, oscillator one or two are working at LFO rates. Um, it can be an amazing and complex LFO. In the wave bank are some shapes called LFO, which are kind of, you know, they're shapes just like any other. They can work at audio rate too, but they're just interesting patterns in which you can um, make an LFO with. Now, what else can we do? I just want to quickly point out the last two things, which is enough to be getting on with, and this is the pulse and the fold output. So there are loads of ways that this thing combines um, and creates tones, and yet another one is pulse. It combines oscillator one and two to make a new kind of mad square wave um, tone. So here is how we change what the pulse is doing. At the moment, it is set to make a pulse only when it completes a cycle. But I can do this, watch your ears. So it's a kind of mad complex bonus square wave combination of these two things. Good to know, isn't it? So yet another output that you have. Um, another thing, just while I'm here, is to point out that there is yet another way that you can combine waves on this thing, which is sync. Uh, and if I put sync on, if I turn this up, loads of different types of sync. So you can sync the oscillators together in a variety of different ways. Make them freak out. You just pick it here you choose what the type of sync you want it is. Simple enough. Uh -huh. um, lastly, the wave folder. Now, this is, for a digital module, surprisingly analog. It is an analog wave folder. Um, and it works like this. Oh wait, it doesn't work. And that is because it weirdly has a sort of VCA built in. The wave folder will not make any sound unless it's up a little bit. Um, Pretty cool, eh? Um, and so, yeah, that wave folder is only wave folding uh, output one by default, but you have got an input here. You can just put any external source that you have into the analog wave folder section. You have a CV control for it, and its output is there. Um, by default, it's normal to the output one. So, obviously, you know, go through the wave files. And there's a load of. Jesus. So there's a load of um, fun to be had with the wave folding as another way of creating wavetables. So just to kind of reiterate, you've got two waveforms, all of which can be sweeped in different ways independently. You can sweep a wider range of them. You can combine them in a whole manner of different ways. You can tilt them to sort of further twist and fold them. You can add drive when you have chord mode on one of the oscillators. You can sync the oscillators at the same time in a load of different ways. You can then use morphing to redress the way that you're reading the oscillators. You can turn the thing into a vocoder and scramble them yet even more. Um, also, you have a tune delay line, which I haven't even touched on. You do it by turning it on there and just turning up. Um, you also have the um, perk mode so that you can just feed it a pulse and it becomes an extremely complex drum machine. Um, Detune for the chord mode so you can get all kinds of wild stuff as it's detuning. Um, I did talk about the combination modes. Yes, the sync is crazy. Oh, yeah. And then you can complex um, FM the oscillators against one each one another with the quantization value. It can be a hugely complex LFO as well. Um, plus, it's got an analog wave folder built in, um, which sounds kind of ace, and it also has this kind of pulse combination output too, um, which is wild and crazy. The other thing you can do is you can save presets and you can morph between the panel setting and the preset settings and do kind of complex sort of strange mangled things and step through the um, settings in real time. So think of it um, as a man, a PhD professor sitting down thinking, how can I make it so that you can do pretty much anything you could possibly want to do to a wavetable. Scramble, tear, rip, 
people combine like a crazy laboratory for wavetables. That is what the shapeshifter is. And I really hope that this will give you an understanding to some degree of how to approach it when you first get one. Thank you. See ya.